Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. So today marks 23 days before I leave for the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, aka Rhinebeck. If you're not familiar, Rhinebeck is a massive yarn and fiber festival that's held in upstate New York every single year. Knitters, crocheters, fiber lovers of every kind flock to this event. It is really a big deal. Now typically to get ready for Rhinebeck, the thing to do is make a sweater and you call it your Rhinebeck sweater because you make it leading up to the event and then you wear it kind of day view it there at Rhinebeck. Now I have tried to jump on this trend before actually for last year's New York Sheep and Wool I was working on this gorgeous granny go round jumper. Unfortunately I didn't finish so it ended up being like cropped with no sleeves. It wasn't all the way done but your girl was still cute. I ran out of time last year granted that was completely my fault but this year I want to challenge myself to actually finish a Rhinebeck sweater. And who better to help me out than my old pal Siri. Now Siri helped me make one of my absolute favorite scarves of all all time so I think she's up to the task to make this sweater a true gem. So grab something warm to drink, get comfy, maybe grab a whip and watch me try to crochet my very first sweater in 23 days. Now before we jump into today's adventure we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. You all have been incredibly generous lately which I really appreciate. I just had to get the lens on my camera fixed and I also need to get some new jeans and stuff for Rhinebeck so your generosity goes a long way. Now today's generous cup of caffeine sponsor is Wolf Weaver and when donating Wolf Weaver said I'm really enjoying your vids Tony I have learned so much and your smiling face brightens my day which is much needed speedy recovery thank you so much Wolf Weaver a couple videos ago I was saying that I was a bit stuffy and I had been under the weather for a while so thank you so much for being attentive to that I'm feeling much better and ready to get my hooks going so let's jump right into today's Rhinebeck sweater pattern mm. that's so good for my Rhinebeck sweater, I decided to branch out from my personal pattern library. I've designed several sweaters, all of which that I love, but I wanted to try something a little bit different for this experience. Specifically, I was looking for a pattern. <laughs> Peanut, do you need something? One sec. You can go, buddy. What do you want to do, babe? Hmm? Somebody making you nervous. Like I was saying, I was looking for a pattern that was fairly easy to make, very easy to customize, and also something with a more relaxed fit. After hours and hours of searching, I landed on a pattern called the Zigzag Sweater by Sang Sidzel Sangild. Sidzel, Sidzel, Sangild, Sidzel, Sidzel, Sangild. After hours of searching, I landed on the Zigzag Sweater by Sidzel Sangild. It's a gorgeous sweater, and I love that she shows a couple different different variations of how to make it. The original one uses two colors striped through the body and then her modification shows the use of some scraps which gave me the idea to use mini skeins for my sweater. Now the zigzag sweater calls for DK weight yarn but I have a massive collection of mini skeins. Collecting mini skeins was kind of my quarantine project and now I'm at the point where I need to actually start using them and I think this is the perfect application because it turns out that holding fingering weight yarn double can get you very close to DK weight. I used to believe that you had to hold two sports double, but that would actually be slightly too heavy. In preparation of this sweater, I spent another couple hours looking through my massive collection of mini skeins to find the perfect set. I ended up pulling 40 minis all around this kind of harvest theme meets jewel tones. There are pinks, browns, blues, grays. I also have a sizable set of purples in this collection. Purple is a color I don't really wear very often, but I found that I've been collecting a lot of it, so it's time to put it to use. And to make these mini stretch, I'll be holding them double with this yarn right here. This is from Ba. This is their Super Wash Merino fingering weight yarn. It's absolutely beautiful and scrumptious. The texture's fantastic. And the color I'm using is called Champagne. So it's like this warm, creamy, neutral color. Now the entire concept here is to use my cream color, my base color, for the collar, the cuffs, and the bottom trim. And then for the body of the sweater, I'll hold that cream with a different color for every single row. To make this as random as possible and give Siri something good to work with, I have to start by numbering each of these mini skeins. So let's get to that.
I just caked up my first skein of La Jolla because now it is time for us to make the tension square or the gauge swatch. There's a lot of debate on whether or not gauge swatches are important for wearables. This is my first time making a sweater, so I'm gonna try and follow the rules, but to each their own. Now I never get on anybody's head about skipping a gauge swatch. It takes time and it uses yarn, but it's the best way to know if your project is gonna fit properly and if you're gonna use the right amount of yarn. So I'm gonna give it a go just with this. I'm going to hold a strand from the outside and the inside, so still two strands together to see if I can make the gauge that is mentioned in the pattern. The nice thing about the zigzag sweater pattern is there's actually a section in there that tells you exactly how to make your gauge swatch, so I'm gonna follow those instructions and see if I can hit gauge. One eternity later. So I won't bore you with the details, but this has been quite a swatch to make. So I started holding my yarn double and using a four millimeter hook as recommended in the pattern. I measured the width of my gauge after just a few rows and I realized I was way off. This four millimeter with this yarn held double is giving me a gauge that is far too loose and it would give me a sweater that is much too large. So I knew if I wanted to have a tighter gauge, I would need to go with a smaller hook. I switched from a four millimeter all the way down to a three and a half millimeter. Now this is getting me quite close to gauge, both on rows and number of stitches, but it is still a little, little bit too large. I don't want to drop down to a 3.25 millimeter. It's going to make it too hard for me to catch both loops that I'm holding together in this tiny little hook. So I'm going to stick with a three and a half millimeter. Now with this project, it comes with several sizes all the way up to a 3XL. I typically wear a 1X or a 2X depending on the brand. In this sweater, based on the measurements, I would be hitting around a 2XL. Well, I love my clothes a little bit oversized, so I was planning to make the 3X anyway. But since my gauge is a little bit too large, I think I'm going to stick with the 2X size and go with this hook so it will still give me a little bit more of that positive ease that I'm going for. So I'm really excited to say that my yarn is all set, my hook is chosen, and I can move on to start my actual sweater. So the pattern starts by making this gorgeous ribbed neckline. I read through the pattern in the instructions. She ensures that that neckline curves to make sure that it's going to lay flat on my neck as opposed to kind of sticking up. So I'm really excited to get started. So we're going to do a little set change. I'm going to go get comfortable, get myself something to drink, and start my sweater. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait to start. I can't wait. Let's do it. Come on. Hello my lovelies and welcome to day three of working on this sweater. I totally skipped even recording anything yesterday because I already reached a point where this project needs to go in timeout for the day. Like I literally couldn't. So I spent the first day working my way through the beginning of the pattern which starts out with this gorgeous ribbing. Absolutely love the technique that this designer uses to create the ribbing but unfortunately this it's not fit around my neck. Based on the gauge of the pattern, I made the ribbing to the length and specifications that it says, and this is supposed to fit around my neck. That's not going around my neck, okay? So this is the challenge and honestly, why I have resisted making a crochet sweater for such a long time. Outside of designing something myself, I often find it quite difficult to get sweaters that actually fit my body well. I think designers, myself included, have the best intentions, but unless you have a background in design or truly understand the way that bodies move and change as you get to larger sizes, there are just certain nuances within pattern design that people miss, and that's understandable. Thankfully. I have the wherewithal to figure this out. So here's how the rest of that first day of working on this sweater went. Once I realized that this was not going to fit around my neck, I was like, okay, you know, maybe this sweater design is not going to be the best fit for me. Maybe I need to just try something else. So I went right back to the drawing board and I started looking for another pattern. I searched on Etsy. I searched through Instagram. I searched through Ravelry, Lovecrafts, Hobie. I checked everywhere and I still could not find a sweater that I love that was going to incorporate all this gorgeous color and then I could also 
finish within the next, you know, few weeks. When I didn't have any luck there, I was like, you know what? I'm going to still make this top down V stitch sweater, but I'm going to need to work out the yoke myself and then throw a collar on it. So I needed to figure out the yoke math, which is basically the number of stitches I need to start my sweater, how many I need for the sleeves as opposed to the front and the back, all of that math I needed to sort out. So I took to YouTube, which is where I go to learn things. I ran across an entire video about how to create the yoke for a crochet sweater. It is fantastic to figure out how to start a top down sweater for any size. So with that information, I started this. So what I have so far, oh God, uh, there it is. Okay. So what I have so far is the top down yoke for my sweater. So this is going to be the back. Essentially it lays like this and all of my stitch markers here delineate where the sleeves of my sweater are going to go. So the other day when I was finally figuring this out at probably like 1130 at night, I started with this bit here based on the information that was in that yoke math video. I put this over myself and I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this. But then I grabbed this little piece of collar I have and kind of put it up to here. And I was like, okay, I can see the vision with a nice thick collar, which is exactly what I want for my sweater. I think that this size is going to work perfectly. Fingers crossed, I am on the right path. And now it is finally time to start adding color to my sweater. So the entire idea is that I'm gonna use a different color mini skein held double with this yarn for each round of my sweater using completely random placements. And for that, of course, I need Siri. So I lined up all of my yarn right here. Since I have to cake these all up and I'm probably gonna be working late into the evening and not looking camera ready, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out my first 10 colors and get to work. I've got a long weekend ahead of me and I wanna get as much of this sweater done as possible. All right, let's pick our first 10 colors for our sweater. Hey Siri, give me a number between one and 40. Okay, so it looks like Siri's first number is seven. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <gasps> Oh my gosh. We're starting with some Montana crochet. Oh my goodness. It says that this colorway is called kindling. You can barely see it because it's kind of the same color as my skin, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I think it's gonna go great with this. At the very top of my sweater, right by my face. I am happy with that. Let's keep going. Hey Siri, give me a number between one and 40. A random number between one. And 40 is 27. 27, okay. 21, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <gasps> And then we're going bright. We're going with this gorgeous bright peach. Oh my gosh, look at you. I'm so excited about this already. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. So here's color number three. 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh my gosh. Mm. All right, y'all. I got all of my colors and oh my gosh, this first pack of 10 is so good. It's so random. It's kind of all over the place. I feel like I have a plan, but um, I don't know. I think it's gonna be better without a plan. I'm going to grab my yarns, start winding, and really get this sweater going.
Hey honeybees and welcome back to progress on my sweater. Uh, first things first, I just realized that I leave for Rhinebeck two weeks from tomorrow and I'm getting a little concerned. I've made a lot of progress on my sweater. It's looking, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm concerned. <laughs> And I'm sure it's because I've never made a sweater before, but it's kind of in this ugly duckling phase right now. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. <sighs> so this is our progress so far. I'm gonna put it on and, and kind of show you, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. But I will say the entire idea of doing this as a Siri picks my sweater thing, out the window. I'm in a time crunch and I just gotta knock this thing out. Colors, definitely doing exactly what I wanted them to do. I am concerned that I made the neckline too wide. I understand that the whole point was for me to go back and put on the ribbing at the neckline, but this just feels huge. <laughs> I did spend some time looking at some knit and crochet sweaters on Ravelry. I know that this can be saved, but again, I am so inexperienced when it comes to crocheting sweaters. And like, all I see is problems. All up and through here, all I see is problems. The length is coming on really nicely. I did add some short rows to the back to add us some length. So you can see on the front, there's one stripe of each color, right? But on the back, there's a small section right in here where there's two stripes of each color. That's where I put in my short rows. I did them on the back specifically because the back of a sweater just doesn't matter as much. I'm pretty happy with it so far. I've got a lot more stitching to do, obviously. I still have pretty much the second half of the body, which I'm also also on the fence about, since I am making my own sweater basically from scratch, I can decide what I want the bottom to look like. My original plan was to kind of start tapering it and go for a sweatshirt type vibe. I'm working the dimensions of this sweater off of one of my favorite sweatshirts, so it makes sense to do that. It's going to give me the shape that I like. But then I also have this really cute tunic that I've been wearing lately. It's kind of got this high-low vibe with a little split on the side, and I think that could be super cute for Rhinebeck. So aside from the body, I also have my two sleeves, which I think are going to work up incredibly fast. The rounds so far on my sweater are taking me about four to five minutes. So I know I can knock out this sweater pretty quickly. I just got to sit down and get her done. I've got my project bag and I'm headed back to the couch. Oh, what project bag is this, do you say? Well, this, my dear, is the Jenna Stash Basket. I created it in collaboration with some of my absolute faves over on Instagram. I will put a link down in the description for you to find this tutorial and all the materials to make your own. But for now, I'm going to take this down to the couch and try to knock out, fingers crossed, the rest of the body. Or, I don't know, it depends on how I feel when I get down there because I'm still a little stressed out about this neckline. I'm not going to lie. And I'm going to be stressed about it until I finish it. So maybe if I have a little bit of discipline tonight, I'll work on the neckline. Oh girl, I don't know. This is why I don't crochet my own clothing. It is too stressful for me. It is stressful for me, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm fine so far with the fit. I just gotta perfect this neckline really quick and figure out what I want the bottom of my sweater to look like. So I'm headed to the couch. We're gonna get some rows in tonight before I go to bed. Hey honey bunnies and happy Saturday. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can tell from my face, but I have been on a roller poster with this sweater. Last time we spoke, I was working on the neckline through the body of the sweater and I was still very hesitant about what's the fit gonna be like? How am I gonna like these colors together? Like, how am I gonna fix this neckline? I'm telling you, the neckline was like out to here and I'm just in my head, I'm like, I can't fix this, I can't fix this. And then it's like, well, if I fix it, whatever happens, it'll block out. Like I, I kept oscillating from very positive and we're gonna get this together to very negative and I'm doing this all wrong and this is a waste of time and I should just go buy a sweater. Like it was it was a little rough. I was not expecting this kind of just like emotional roller coaster from trying to crochet my first sweater. I get it now. I get it now. Every now and then I'll be talking about a technique or an idea and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so easy. It's only easy because I've done it before. But I get it now. This idea of a sweater or making a handmade garment can be very daunting because there are just so many decisions to make. And if you do something a little bit different at this stage, you're going to have to deal with it at this stage. But I am very grateful to say that I am at a point in my sweater, not going to lie, I'm super, super proud of it. So once I finished the body, I got down to the ribbon. I tried it on the fit was wonderful it's a little bit snug which I should expect at this point because I haven't blocked it yet I haven't given those fibers a chance to relax a little bit into a more comfortable shape that's what's gonna happen after blocking but at that point I had to decide am I gonna move on to the collar and try and fix this neckline or am I gonna move on to the sleeves and fingers crossed they fit how I want them to well sleeve island is a thing it's when you finish the whole body of your sweater and all you have left is the sleeves and for some folks being on sleeve island is like literally the worst it's so mundane, you've already done the real fun part of the sweater, putting on the sleeves, 
doesn't seem like anybody enjoys it. I'm super excited because I've built into this sweater the color changes, things that'll keep me motivated to go row by row by row. So I wasn't so much worried about that. What I was worried about was that neckline. It was like out to here and I'm, I was really going through it y'all. Like you, you think I'm being dramatic right now? I am not being dramatic. I was looking at it in the mirror. Mind you, it's like one or two o'clock in the morning. I'm looking in the mirror like, I can't fix this. I don't know how to fix this. There's no collar that I'll be able to put on this that's gonna lay flat that's gonna fix this. It's gonna get all bunchy and gross and it's just gonna be awful. Like this is what's going on in my head. But I am proud to say I am now on the other side of it. And, and if you're willing to indulge me, I wanna show you my progress so far. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I am so freaking proud of myself. I am so over the moon about how good this looks. Like I just sewed the collar on today. This is about as well as this could have gone. Even though I wasn't able to directly use the zigzag sweater pattern for the whole thing, I did kind of follow the technique that the designer uses to make the collar. I just made the collar after the fact as opposed to making the collar and stitching right off of it. So I finished up the collar, kind of measured it out to the sweater, and then I just started whipping stitching it like I put a couple locking stitch markers in there to try and make sure that it would lay flat and then with the right side facing I didn't even flip it inside out I just whip stitched went through a couple strands on the sweater and a couple strands on the neckline I'm so happy that it worked out I really am if this would have gone poorly this video might not have happened I'll be honest, this video might not exist. And as you can see, all I have left are the sleeves. I did have to close up a couple rows here under the arm. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, I'm happy again. I'm winging it, you know? And if I was following a pattern, row by row, step by step, I would probably feel a lot more secure, but I've just kind of winged this based off of the fit of one of my favorite sweatshirts, the yarn that I wanted to use, and the gauge that I found out. Like, I'm just making this up as I go. So the fact that it's actually working out, I'm so pleased and it's got me really motivated to get through my sleeves. So if I've learned anything over the last week of working on this sweater, it is to remember the adage that comes from my good friend Gigi. It is not difficult, it's just new. When it comes to this yarny life, when it comes to this stitching stuff, a lot of the stuff that you are looking to try, someone has done before and someone has done before very well and they can teach it to you. So if you're nervous about making your first sweater, if you're nervous about going off script and doing your own thing, understand at least with crochet, it's very easy to fix your mistakes and who knows, you might surprise yourself at how talented you are. Without me telling you what all I went through to make this sweater, by the time it's done, you're gonna be like, wow, she made a sweater. And I'm gonna be like, yeah, I made a sweater. But I also went through some changes along the way. So now it is a glorious Saturday evening. It's gonna be pretty quiet around here. So I'm hoping I can make it through an entire sleeve. So we'll see how it goes. And I will catch you for my next progress report. Hey friends. Oh my gosh. So I'm up bright and early because my sweater and I have a special announcement. Houston, we have a sleeve. Ooh! So the sleeve went on, was it last night or two nights ago? A couple nights ago. Here's a quick little clip. Oh yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ah, we have a sleeve. <laughs> we did it y'all. We have, we have a sleeve. We, we don't, we don't need to look at that. There's no sleeve over there, but we got this one. Check this out. I'm beyond excited. Every bit of progress that I'm making on this sweater, I'm feeling like, okay, we're getting there. We're almost there. This makes sense. I'm loving this now. My sweater kind of went through this ugly duckling phase. I think before I put the collar on, before I got to the sleeves, but now I'm full on loving it. I'm not going to do a fit check just yet. I'm getting excited to finish the other sleeve, which we don't have just yet. I kept the minis that I used here in order so that way I could use that same sequence of minis on the other side to make the sleeves look identical. So now I'm gonna go back to the couch and park it to finish up this second sleeve. I want to finish it today. I wanna get this in the blocking water today. I am going to wet block it, which I'm like, nervous is, um, as accurate of a word as I can think of right now, but I'm sure there's something that has a heavier meaning to describe how I feel about wet blocking the sweater. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm going back to the couch to finish watching Dahmer, which like, is everybody watching that right now? Look, I am fully acquainted with the disgusting Dahmer story, but something about the way Evan Peters plays this is giving me 
full body chills every time I watch this show. Niecy Nash though is my saving grace. Like they couldn't have cast a better person in her role. So love you Niecy, you're killing it boo. All right, let's head to the couch and make a sleeve. Hey, hun buns, and welcome to my kitchen. Uh, I didn't clean up, but I hope it looks okay. We have a slight change in scenery because I have some amazing news. As you can see behind me, we have a finished sweater. We have a finished sweater. Can you believe it? Like I was up late, late, late last night, finishing off the cuff at my mom's house while we were watching football, and now the whole thing is done. And when I tell you, when I slipped on this sweater, I felt like Superwoman. I felt like I have harnessed the power of the world in my hands and birthed the most amazing thing that has ever existed. And if you don't feel that way, when you crochet your first sweater, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I felt like a full on wizard. Okay, I could talk about it forever, but here's a quick little sneaky peek and then I'm gonna go put it on for you. Beautiful neckline, we're all familiar with it. We know what that looks like, but I now have two sleeves. I have a ton of ends, clearly. I have a ton of ends that I haven't completely figured out how I'm gonna deal with yet. I think there's gonna be some tying involved. This is my sweater and I don't have to follow all the rules. I don't know, I might, I might take some shortcuts, but that's another problem for another clip. Get excited, it's really, really good. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't it fantastic? Look at the fit. Look at the arms fitting me perfectly. This section here, it's not too gappy. It's not too tight. Like this is so good. And even though it's still a little snug here, I still have to block it. Like this is the exact shape I was going for. I've tried this thing on about 50 times now. I never want to take it off the moment I put it on. I know that like, especially through the arms, a little through the tum tum, it's a little bit snug. Not gonna lie, <laughs> my boobs look great. <laughs> they do. It just, it hugs well. And I love the back as well. I've got a little bit more space back here to keep my, cause I sweat on my back. So it's nice to have a little bit more space here so it's not hugging my back. But the next step is blocking. So let me get reoriented and we're gonna talk about blocking for a sec. So here's the long and short about blocking, right? So blocking is a process where we're gonna introduce water and time and drying and all of that to our project to help soften the stitches, improve drape. It's gonna clean it up, any kind of smells or oils that I got into my project. Blocking is gonna clean all of that for us. Specifically, I'm doing the wet blocking method, which involves completely submerging your project in water, letting it get totally soaked, and then pinning it in place with the expectation being that all of those good things are going to happen, your project's going to dry, and fingers crossed, it's going to fit exactly how you want it to. Now for anyone who has never wet blocked a project before, I'm literally in your shoes right now. I don't know if my whole foot is in there because I'm sure it's a lot bigger than yours, but I am in your shoes. So as excited as I am about blocking, I'm also incredibly nervous because wet blocking is a little bit unpredictable. Since I use merino wool, I know that this fiber has some natural memory, so I'm not worried about it stretching out like cashmere or alpaca might do. But I am a little nervous about the parts that I love about this sweater stretching out in a way that I don't love. I just need to put on my big girl undies, get this thing in some water, get it down on the blocking board so it can dry and I can see what my finished sweater will actually look like. I'm stalling right now. I'm a little bit nervous. 
I'm not gonna lie. Uh, first thing I need to do, get out of the sweater. Second thing, I need to wash out the sink. Third, I need to put it in the water. Cross your fingers, cross your toes, cross your legs, cross your eyes, like pray for me, y'all. I'm. <laughs> if my mom was here, she would say I was being dramatic. Um, but you know, we've spent a lot of time on this and if things don't go well, um, you know, there's always ice cream. So let's, let's get to it. Hey lovelies, welcome back. It's been a few days or maybe a few weeks. I'm really not sure at this point how long it's been since the last time I saw you, but my sweater is off the blocking boards. If you couldn't tell already, I am full on in love, obsessed, can't get enough, want to make 10 more of these sweaters. I just love it. I love it. Of every single thing that I own, this is the best fitting, most comfortable, best looking thing I have ever done. Now I'm going to be honest with you, it was not love at first try on. Actually, when I took this off the blocking boards, it had grown pretty significantly. I had an idea that that was going to be an issue, but it was truly a rookie mistake on my part to wet block such a heavy sweater. I should have just steamed it, but this is how we learn. When I took my project off the blocking board, I realized it had grown about three to four inches. Thankfully, since I worked it top down, all I needed to do was undo the ribbing, which hurt ever so slightly. And then I ripped back seven rounds of work. From there, I just reapplied the ribbing, lightly steamed that ribbing, not too much. And when I tried it on again, it was the 
perfect length. It fits really well through the arms, really nice and relaxed around my belly, and it sits on my hips at the perfect spot. Now obviously I'm not completely done, I still need to weave in my ends, and it is the day before I'm about to get on a flight to go up to Rhinebeck, but I'm not concerned, I've got all night still to pack and weave in these ends. After this entire experience, I have a few takeaways, so I'm going to share just three of them with you. First off, if you have never crocheted or knit yourself a sweater, now is the time to do it. I have always been very hesitant to make something for my body and even though I've been crocheting consistently for the last 10 plus years, I've never made something just for myself that fit and looked this good. And if I'm honest with myself about why it took me so long to get here, it's because I've never really appreciated my own body enough to make something that truly fit well. I've always just purchased clothes from stores, but now I have a greater appreciation of the people that I follow on Instagram or YouTube who are constantly making sweaters because there's truly nothing like figuring out how a certain part of a sweater is going to lay over your body and then coming out with something that you adore so much that is fitted just for you. This sweater is not going to look like this on anyone else's body. This is made for Tony and I'm obsessed. So if you've been hesitant or a little bit scared to make your own sweater, I strongly recommend that you find a pattern from a reputable designer and give it a go. My second takeaway from all of this is about the pressure of making a sweater for Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck, AKA New York Sheep and Wool, is really hyped up as this big kind of mecca for knitters and crocheters to come show off all of the effort that they've put into making a sweater. I've heard people kind of talking about this pressure of making a sweater specifically for Rhinebeck, and I'm here to tell you that pressure is completely made up. As grateful as I am to have finished something from Rhinebeck, it was more important to me to finish this project for myself and wear it there to show it off as opposed to just making this for the event. I'm super proud of myself that I was able to make a sweater. And as much as I love all my friends and people that I'll see at Rhinebeck, I could be there all by myself and be just as proud of what I accomplished. So if you're planning to go to Rhinebeck or any other kind of fiber festival, just don't buy into all of that pressure to have to make a sweater. If you wanna make a sweater, do it. And if you don't, then don't. There's a lot of general hype within the maker community. And what I recommend is just put it all out of your mind and go experience these things yourselves. Fiber festivals are a real treat. I absolutely adore them. And most of the time when I go to them, it's just for myself. And honestly, the true hype and excitement of Rhinebeck is barely for the event itself. It's everything that goes on around it. It's getting a fun place to stay and inviting all of your friends. That's okay. What's up? I was just coming to change my clothes. Can you give me like 10 more minutes? Yeah, I can give you all the time you need. I don't know, you look so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, babe. You look so beautiful. Aw, that's very sweet of you. Me too. Yeah, I'll be done in like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Put your pants up, boy. In all honesty, the real fun of Rhinebeck is everything that goes on around the event. It's getting a fun house and hanging out there with your friends, eating good food, drinking good wine, laughing together, and making memories. It's going to some of the auxiliary events around Rhinebeck, each of which has its own vibe and own vendors. And it's also enjoying upstate New York in the fall. There is nothing more beautiful than driving those gorgeous, windy roads with all the fall foliage, living your best autumn basic girl life. I'm here for every minute of it and I'm gonna soak it all in, in a sweater or not. And my last takeaway from this entire experience is how important it is to know your stuff if you're going to design for larger bodies. You remember this? I still have it. I kept it as a reminder of what not to do if you're trying to make a Tony sized garment. Size inclusivity, plus size designing, whatever buzzword you wanna throw at it, we're all trying to do better when it comes to designing for plus size bodies. I appreciate the effort and the focus around a topic like this. As a crochet designer myself, I have had to rework some of my older patterns to include larger sizes, and I'm still on that journey. But what I will never do is cut corners and skimp on the mechanics of creating something for somebody of a larger size. It is already hard enough for me to muster up the courage to make something that fits my body, and the last thing I need is hitting a roadblock because we can't even get the collar large enough. Maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic, but that really, really frustrated me. 
because if you're gonna go through the effort of adding larger sizes to your pattern, damn it, they better fit. So let this be a lesson to you. If you are going to design for plus size bodies, if you are going to step your game up and try to enter that arena, make sure you know your stuff. Take a class, work with a tech editor or a grader, somebody who can help you make sure that what you put on that paper is actually going to fit how you say it's going to. Don't let grading your patterns be an afterthought. Understand that as bodies get larger, different parts grow at different rates. Take your time, do your homework, and do it right. Okay, lovelies, I'm gonna step off of my soapbox. That's all I have to say about it, except, oh my God, this sweater looks so good. Your girl looks good. And now without further ado, let's go enjoy Rhinebeck. Oh gosh, a girl, I thought it was ketchup. <laughs> I got me some fries. I look cute today. Yeah, you do. Girl. So cute. Oh, okay. You didn't forget. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't know that. You did. You did. Love it. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks so good on you. Yes, darling. Love, love, love. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. oh my gosh, yes. The moment, oh, <laughs> do it, girl. Is it recording? Yes. <laughs> That's all I need. A couple <laughs> seconds. <sighs> Welcome home. Hello, good morning. Welcome home. We are back from Rhinebeck, and my haul is glorious. <laughs> no, honestly, the trek back from Rhinebeck was not terrible. My mom and I and one of our friends drove from upstate back towards LaGuardia, got to the airport, got my little Prosecco, which was delicious, but then our flight was delayed. So then my Prosecco wore off and then we got home late and I was a bit annoyed because the guy in front of me had his seat reclined so much. And with these long legs, my knee was right at that little bar that holds that back pocket where all the stuff you're supposed to read on a plane is. And somebody was farting. Somebody... Somebody was farting the, the entire time. I stretched out the neck of my sweater, tucking my nose into my sweater for like two hours. But then we arrived back at the Detroit airport. My dad was in his giant red truck. Our chariot awaited, got home, unpacked, relaxed for a while, even worked on a project a bit, hung out with my cats, kissed on my husband, everything was good. And now in the brilliant light of day, I can admire just every skein of yarn I got to bring home and also just reminisce on every single memory I made. If you've never gone to an event like this before, let me tell you that it is equal parts about all of the gorgeous yarn, supporting local artisans, finding that really unique thing that you're super excited to bring home. But it is also very much about the memories that you make with the friends that you haven't seen in months or sometimes years. It is amazing taking my friends out of my phone and putting them right there in front of me. So I took a ton of pictures, as many as I could remember, but I didn't get nearly as much footage as I was hoping for. I was living in the moment and enjoying every single second of it. So if you get an opportunity, again, to go to a yarn festival, do not pass it up. It is always so very worth it. It's been a real joy sharing this experience with you. I feel like it was epic craft project mixed 
mixed with a little bit of self-discovery. This is the kind of stuff that gets me really excited about what I do. And I know that even though I love my very first sweater, every one that comes after it will be my favorite as well. So thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope you had fun. I know it was a little bit chaotic. Things really went downhill towards the middle there, but it all came together in the end and you were along for every step of the ride. <laughs> so thank you. Well, friends, that's all for now, but I do have a question before we part ways today. If you have never crocheted or knit yourself a sweater before, drop down in the comments and let me know why. What's your hesitation? What's holding you back? And if you have made yourself a sweater, cardigan, any kind of wearable, maybe give some advice to folks who are a little bit nervous about getting started. I know I was really apprehensive at the beginning of my experience, but now that I've kind of ripped off that band-aid, all I want to do is make sweaters. And now I have plenty of yarn to do it. <laughs> all right, my loves, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>